<laughs> All right. So uh, for this first picture, I have uh, this is it kind of came to me as a dream. Um, and, and like all for all these pictures, guys, uh, like it, it's weird because when I draw, like I get into this almost trance state where I just stop thinking about everything else and I let go of like anything that I will have to do later. And I'm just in that moment. And um, <clears throat> there are some times where like I can't draw and I, and I wind up meditating. And then there are times where like I'll fall asleep or I'll be meditating and I'll get I'll get like visions or like just really weird dreams. And um, or like I'll have like flashes. I can't remember the dreams, but when I wake up, I'll be really inspired to draw a picture. So this one was uh, one of the inspired pictures. And um, this is when I started to like this the the star seed information started to like pour into me and um now i i never really knew like i didn't know much about the star seed movement um like in 2018 because this picture is from 2019 and um i i didn't know too much about the star seed movement uh, but i did remember hearing about it in like 2011 2010 and it wasn't until I had this weird dream where like I was walking through this city and all like like the, the, the buildings were all made of glass and all the glass had like different pictures like flashing on the buildings and the sky was like this weird like purplish bluish color and like it, it felt like it felt like a game like it felt like a video game and that's that's strange for me because a lot of my dreams are very realistic. Uh, like it, like some people they dream in like pictures, some people dream in like sound. Uh, I dream in like full color, ultra HD. It just looks like real life. <laughs> and um, with this one, it did. It felt like real life plus. And um, I remember we were I was walking through these buildings, and um, all the screens started turning to sevens, like throughout all the screens and I started hearing these voices and um you know there were like kind of questions to myself and uh it was just talking about like am I ready for an adventure and like who is God and how to find yourself are you ready to be free are you ready to find your crown and like all these things I didn't really know the symbology of any of it uh at this time and uh it was talking about learning magic and being the star and um, I remember while I was walking, like in in one of the buildings, like the, the glass was broken and there was this weird golden like seed thing. And uh, I, like it said, I, I thought it was, it was called the star seed to me. And um, in my dream, like I like I, I lost like autonomy. And when I saw the seed, like I remember seeing like like uh like an option <laughs> like i was able to like run or like leave and then like I, I felt like if i did that i would never see this opportunity again and then i also saw like fucking tape and um like i i feel like this picture was like a confirmation of like what i did and um yeah this is, this is like a picture of my character um ingesting that star seed and um that's the the beginning of like my activation journey over like since then I, I i wound up having a bunch of different dreams and we'll go into all the other pictures but this is like step one the choice uh, yeah does anything come out to you well well okay so like right off the bat i got a spiritual awakening that was it like immediately like but i just want to take a moment to just admire your process man the fact that you dream so vividly and that you can then interpret your dreams in this art style is really, it's incredible. I mean, like, I am right there with you in the astral dimension right now. Whoa. The that you managed to capture is incredible. Yeah, well, yeah, man. I mean, sevens is interesting. It's, it's interesting that you saw sevens. That's like some higher vibrational guidance right there. It's so cool. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's a spiritual awakening. Your guides coming to you and giving you the choice 
which I really like. I mean, you said this happened in 2019 or 2018, somewhere around there. Yeah, the uh, the, the dream happened in 2018. Um, the the like full like I, I guess like the the real awakening really started in like 2019. But 2018 wow. is like when I first got out of the military, and I was um, kind of readjusting to like living in Florida. Um, and and I feel like that's when they were ready to uh to, to like just offer me the choice, and and wow. then the wheel started turning, man. It got weird. <laughs> that's that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So like oftentimes you you go through a spiritual way awakening in your dreams, or you play out a sequence of events in your dreams, and then they'll slowly materialize in your life. What I I really like about this is that you were clearly given an option which i which is so cool it's like all right this is you this is inside of you your star seed it's time to wake up but you have to decide do you want to do this are you ready because it's happening and i think <laughs> <it's really> cool <laughs> yeah it, it it definitely like I, I remember specifically in the dream that it was it was a choice um the the realm that i was in like i said i, I wish i could have captured it more with like picture because it, it was just so strange uh it, it felt very like cyberpunkish, and and that was very out of my normal element of like my dreams like i, I just never dream about that type of stuff and um it just felt like i said it, it felt so real and uh, all the voices that i was hearing like they like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, they, it felt like me. Like, it just felt like my internal dialogue. Uh, I was, like, really, like, just mesmerized and drawn by this weird, like, golden twitching orb thing. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy I didn't get to taste it or anything. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I, I just, yeah. I, I remember it specifically telling me that I was going to find my crown. Interesting. That's very interesting. Kind of alluding to the fact that you're like nobility and that you're gonna like like coming into your right, your uh, your uh, yeah, your birthright. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Like claiming your full embodied ascension. Like now is the time. Here you go. Are you ready? That's so cool. That's so cool. Did did memories of being Octorian star seeds start surfacing in your mind after you made the decision to, uh, you know, ingest this amazingly cool glowing orb thing? <laughs> well, uh, it, it didn't happen immediately because honestly, I I, had, I didn't even know what an Octorian was at this point. Like. I, I was so green to the space community. To this day, I haven't even seen Star Wars. So, like, um, like all of this stuff that I've gotten has been either through my own research or, like, through my spirit, like, kind of guiding me while I was looking. And um, so, yeah, like, it, it, it did start to unfold. Um, but I think it started to unfold in a way that uh, was most familiar with me. And that kind of, like, segues into my next picture. Whoa, okay, yeah, so, if you wanna. Oh, oh man. All right, so this one's a little simplistic. <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I didn't draw with the intention of ever showing anyone, but yeah. <laughs> but like I said, it was a dream. So um, this this one came a little later, and mm -hmm. because, at, because of where I was in my life, like I, I didn't know anything about any other spiritual, um, like, uh, like spiritual, I guess like religions yet besides like I had Christianity and like I had studied that like really uh, heavily in my childhood um, but I like since since the military like I hadn't been looking into much other religions you know I was looking into war so um, I, I feel like it started to um, like the the message of what was going on and what was about to happen started to uh, unfold as um, Oh, the doggies are here, huh? Those are my best friends right there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, give me a second. Do you want to pause?
All right, so for the, for this picture, um, yeah, it, it came to me like uh, I, I feel like this, the the information started to unravel to me in in a way that I was most familiar with. And since like the only real religion that I studied thoroughly was Christianity, um, I think it started to unfold that way. Um, I like I I had this knowing that like I needed to get back in the Bible and started reading, and um, and just started understanding like what like what these dreams are trying to tell me like i knew it had something to do like with prophecy or propheticness or whatever like it had something to do with the bible and i know that like i, I felt like i felt like i was getting crazy like I, I just felt like it was just it was a little much <laughs> but um with this dream like what, what wound up happening is like i i saw these angels like these little eyeball guys um and they they were telling me that like I was supposed to be like watching and observing like like as witness to like something and like I saw these weird cat beings like a black and a white one and they were like a per like apparently neutral and they were doing something with money and they were telling me that like there are still like unknown forces at work that I just don't know yet like it was very rudimentary and it was telling me that there was like a bunch of watchers um and that like i was connected to one of them and um that there was going to be a big judgment and that like this was this stuff has like all been written down a long long time ago and like i'm just playing a small part in it like like i'm like a like only a domino i guess <laughs> not in a, like in a small way but i felt i felt like that was the the equivalent to like i was just uh, i was supposed to be supposed to be a domino and they were saying that they were going to be weighing hearts and um, like I saw the scale and like I remember seeing like the scale was actually really weird because I remember seeing it and um, they had these like huge like lumping like swirling hearts. It, it looked a lot like that that star seed that I eat, uh, but it, it was in the shape of that heart. And um, and then I saw like, yeah, there's these feathers and they were just they were just measuring the, uh, the, the hearts and feathers and the, uh, the measuring thing itself was like gold. And it was telling me that there was like seven heavens and there was teachers and judges and um they were talking about like eternal damnation and hell and stuff like that and i was like what the fuck because like you know that's that's the big thing with with christianity and like that that type of fear programming if you uh don't kind of uh disassemble what hell really is uh like your fears like when you get when you hear those words or when you hear the equivalent of that vibration you will your brain will paint like pictures of what you know so just because like i interpreted out of the dream like hell and damnation and and like eternal judgment like that's just because that's what my brain was already like told about that stuff it, it's the the conscious relaying like it, to to things of its past and now looking back like i know that it was talking about like judgment of of, of the creations themselves whether they were going to be um, harmonious or, or disharmonious. And if they're disharmonious, they will naturally uh, unravel themselves. And that unraveling, uh, that, that state of being during that unraveling is a state of hell um, as your vibration starts to lower. Um, and, and then I remember them telling me something about DNA. Like, I remember that was a big part of it. Like, they were, they were measuring, like, these DNA strands. And I, I feel like they were going like the, I remember seeing the DNA strands being put inside the hearts. And um, so that could be a, talking about like like genetic bloodline healing. Uh, it, it, it talks about I don't know, man, like it was a lot. And uh, I, like from 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 a spiritual like decoding perspective, I just knew that there was uh, there was a bigger game at play um, that I did have a place in it. And that I uh, that I, I was meant to I was meant to, to, to protect in some form or fashion, and um, that instilled a lot in me uh, because since leaving the military, it was kind of like, uh, like I didn't really know what my purpose was after that. And uh, I started I got this dream. This was this was a little closer to 2019, um, and uh, you'll see it. Uh, I have a picture of of when when like the whole veil gets unfurled, and I, I see a lot more. Um, so th is there anything that, that jumps out um, about this stuff or any questions you have about this one? Oh yeah, man, I'm getting so much. Firstly, I just want to say that 
it's so fascinating that you make the effort to document your dreams even though you don't fully understand them at the time which i think is really cool like it they reveal themselves to you after you've drawn them which i think is so interesting just to get into a state of mind where you can channel this information from higher aspects of your consciousness and then take steps to interpret it i think that's really cool so i'm i'm definitely seeing an ascension process in the previous picture you decided all right i i'm waking up i choose to wake up i choose to acknowledge myself as starcy and then you start vibrating at a different frequency because that decision changed you and you start harmonizing and attracting new information and that is what i'm getting from this picture man i'm seeing you starting to attract that spiritual truth that you need to sort of come to the conclusions you need to in this lifetime you're starting to resonate with the information that is ultimately going to be conducive to your development as a star seed and then i'm also seeing some prophetic stuff like acting in harmony with your true self is going to bring you abundance i mean that's what i'm getting from the cats with the money over there and yeah you discovering the other own and ah uh, dogs <laughs> yeah I, i really feel like like looking now looking like back on these like I, i'm trying to remember the dream and those guys with the with the blindfolds like they were weird like like energetic masses but they had they had like physical blindfolds on like it was not physical but you know what i mean they had dream blindfolds on and i remember yeah. when when they were talking it wasn't that they were talking with their mouths cuz they didn't have mouths that was the weird part they didn't have mouths at all and <laughs> and like they they just vibrated like their their body like shook in a way that like the matter around them sounded like it was humming like like it, it sounded like singing without mouths it was like the 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 dream world around them was singing their voice it was so strange um wow. and i i had no clue what was going on at the time <laughs> like i noticed that there are seven of them as well yeah there is yeah you're right is that linked to the seven heavens message that you got it it very well could be um like i i never actually looked at like cuz i'm not really huge on num- numberology like i don't know too much about it So like I I don't really know what the sevens mean and I'm sure someone will know and and will put it in the comments. Um mm-hmm. but I do know that like yeah, I I just I it does match up. You you do have a point. And then, and also I noticed that like the cat um like there's one cat and there like it says black and white in like a transitioning. I I I do remember in the dream like like I said there was this like cat spirit and it was it kept switching between black and white and it was like protecting and then like it was also like it had something to do with money like it was like taking money in some form or fashion and and <laughs> i don't know what that means but i do know that like these these two um representatives at the top here uh with the j and the n that's supposed to represent like me and nikki spirit cuz at this point i didn't know nikki and um like i said i, I just I, i felt like we were connected also to uh these two spirits here that uh that were watching like the the unfolding of everything like they were just staring at this like it's weird cuz they weren't staring they were looking at the scroll but they were blindfolded and it was all vibratory and it was just very very crazy um interesting yeah that that um could link to perhaps you using your finances in a more spiritual way maybe for like a spiritual practice perhaps 
you and Nikki are supposed to develop some sort of spiritual practice. Does that resonate with you? That that could make sense. Like uh, like definitely. Uh, I feel like we we she has she has a degree in teaching. <laughs> like it's not it's not impossible. <laughs> Okay, can we go? Can can we uh, touch on the scales there for a bit? Because that sure. was pretty. Interesting. So yeah, man. I mean, what I'm seeing here is the ushering in of the age of Aquarius, and that as a result of that, people are changed. Like you literally drew a double helix there, and that just res that says to me that people are physically changed like genetically changed as a result of this tremendous consciousness shift and the part that you play in that i think is ensuring that there is harmony like what i'm getting from the stream is that it's the it's the last call you know like uh how do I say this? What's a great way to just illustrate this analogy? Like this is the last go. This is the final, the final test, and you have to make it or else. And what I'm seeing here is that you play an integral role in ensuring the harmonious development of humanity as a species. In addition to where we are, other star seed, you know, who's having a rather similar awakening process. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I can see that message. Like, like it, it's like almost another thing that I that like is starting to jump out at me. Like, so you see these, these dudes with the question marks. Yes. Um, and you see the one in the middle. He's got like a horn, and and he's got like a little bit of both, like angel and devil. And like, yeah, what, what if this is the process? Like. Look, there, there. Look, it says, look, you have a this cash cat, and then the arrow is going down here, and like I'm starting to remember, like, like it, it's like they're being judged based off of whatever. Like I don't know what, but it feels like me and Nikki already got judged, and that's what like we we were sure proven to be uh, what we are. Like we, we we chose Angel, if that makes any sense. Doesn't that like yeah. isn't that weird? Like the cats aren't polarized. That's why they can go either black or white. The cats are the, the the question mark dudes and then yeah. uh, they're not even cats they're just well no they look like cats and, <laughs> and and so then they 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 go upon this oh man my ears are starting to ring i think i'm getting it right <laughs> they go in front of these watchers and they get their i guess they get they they get they get weighed uh they get ways they guess on their polarity um, in their choices, and then they become what they become. Yes. All right. I, yeah, I think I'm that's what that. it is. It's the process of, of becoming whatever you're supposed yeah. to be. And your DNA yeah. team right there. Bang. Seeing you and Nikki just standing there, it's like you're kind of assisting people in that ascension process in your own unique ways. Like I'm getting that you're kind of, yeah, you're, you're, you're guiding in a way. Definitely the process of becoming harmonious. Yeah, and and I, I remember specifically writing down that like uh, right above the golden guy, it says, uh, save as many as possible. And I, I remember that like being one of my like lessons I had to learn. It was like how to save people. Cause like, it's not that I go over it and I do anything. Uh, and and that, that's, I feel like every light worker's like first lesson is that like you you know as a light worker you don't go and save anybody that's not your job you know they yeah they, they save themselves <laughs> you, yeah, you, you have just have to be the good to example yeah. and 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 if you see something and it falls in your realm do something you know what i mean you have to be that intensive that active player in your reality uh, but that doesn't mean that you uh interfere in other people's lives in any form or fashion uh, outside of their their conscious will so that's that's important to know guys if you if you feel like you're the one saving that's an ego situation and that's not so good <laughs> i totally agree with you man you 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 lead by example you do what you came here to do and that assists other people i noticed that your character there has a sword and that makes me think that this dream could have been 
the calling you had to become a like a, a light warrior on this planet. Do you, do you think that makes sense? Does that resonate with you? I I I can totally feel that because you know at this point I had just gotten out of the service and uh, if you guys had seen uh, my podcast um, like I'd gone through a lot in my childhood. And so I've always felt like I've kind of been like helping other people uh, a lot of my life. I I, I honestly, it took me until after I got out of the military to be like, okay, I'm finally gonna start living for myself now. Like I've helped enough people, I'm gonna go do me things now. And um, so maybe as like, um, like in this process of, of judgment, like that was the role that I played. Like because of all the choices I've made in my life, like that's what I, like that's what I got. I got the sword because that's that's the kind of person I was, uh, and and still am to a degree. Uh, I just fight a different way now. Interesting. Yeah, I, I find it fascinating that the decision you made to listen to yourself and to do what was conducive to your own well-being resulted in people in your life also coming to that conclusion like you deciding to it's it's again it's just leading by example you yeah. made positive change by focusing on bettering yourself which i think is pretty cool thanks man yeah it like you you guys gotta realize like at this point like when i was drawing this i like i said i had like no background knowledge on much of anything like i literally only read the bible and and so like I didn't understand how synchronous and how uh, like cosmic uh, or stellar this stuff is until you start to get into all the information. It, it all connects, like the, the the heavens and and like space and time and all that stuff is all it's all it's all just your your brain's way of kind of interpreting things outside of its like normal understanding. And so uh, it's all symbology is what I'm trying to get at. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm so blessed that I got to get exposed to so many other, uh, like, like this kind of, like I said, was the platform to get me free to looking at how all the other religions had portrayed pretty much their, their version of the message. And um, like once, once I got that much exposure, that much contrast, like that's what really let me uh, to, to be able to uh, really read the signs. Um, and, and even my dreams a lot better than I did before. Interesting, yeah. It's like you could suddenly see the absolute truth within all of these different theologies and you came to the conclusion that they're all saying the same thing. It's just a matter of semantics. Yeah, yeah, the, the semantics. And, and then on top of that, um, interpretation. Uh, so there are certain words like, like hell, and, and eternal damnation that, that <laughs> strikes certain chords with inside of our brains. <laughs> so like, the, you know, the words that we use to describe the message is very important uh, because it does paint a picture. And I think some, some religions paint prettier pictures than others. Uh, but overall, like when you get down to the core of it, there is, there is truth there. And, and, and that's why it's really important to get as much contrast as possible. So that you can be that that discerning factor of what's true for you. Yeah, definitely. I think that you, you that that's a very interesting process you went through here. Um, I'm looking at these seven figures, and what's ringing in my head is the dwellers of Udal in the halls of Amenti, and they kind of reside in Pachamama's room or Gaia's room or whatever, and that that space is often referred to as a as a as a as a place of growth or conception you might even like to use the term initiation but i think you've got some pretty potent spirit guides in your life is what i'm trying to get at do you, do you think you've got spirit guides oh yeah definitely um i i have so many different spirit guides um and that I've only awakened to them now because like I, I've spent so much time like talking and like drawing pictures and communicating with them. Uh, but I, at, at this point in my life, I only really knew like Jack 
and he wasn't really a guy more of like a counter example <laughs> uh, this is when i got introduced to like my good guys and um yeah like it i i definitely i now that i'm, I'm seeing it like there's definitely some 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 angels like those are definitely my angel helpers coming in uh to to you know to to usher me into the, this this new mission Wow, this is so great. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this, man. Oh, no problem. I mean, this is like a really personal uh, imagery that you're sharing with me, man. To be able to just uh, divulge it with you is a real pleasure. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, it, it feels really good to share these things. Because like I said, I never thought I would. Uh, and I thought, I thought honestly that I was like, <laughs> I thought I was a little crazy uh or or that like i was making a book like i thought i was like making a book or something i, I thought i don't know what i was doing dude like I, that's the thing guys you, you we don't know anything so <laughs> you know if you're if you're meant to draw draw if you if you're getting dreams write them down like you just just keep using that imagination as much as you can and it, it's so crazy what what will come out of it uh because the imagination is not what we've been told like it's it's a potent factory of manifestation and it's it's our birthright to claim it uh as our own and uh to master it you know should be is the is the goal of the of, of humanity that's what makes us so special um you know not, no one can create like we can we are we, we got big heads <laughs> i totally agree man it's your birthright you you are the kings and queens of your own realities so you gotta take that crown exactly you gotta take the crown all right next picture so oh, <laughs> this is yeah. this picture hilarious so this i this one wasn't really a dream more than it was like me uh in like uh so i i, I kind of go into myself when i draw and that character with the horns there that's jack and he's kind of who I'm interacting with in my inner inner reality, and uh, he's kind of like my shadow facet. And <laughs> um, Magnus, that 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 golden eyeball, started to tell me like tell my <laughs> to tell Jack directly, my ego, exactly what was going on, and it blew his mind. Like I, I at this point in time. I, I don't know how to explain what was happening, man. <laughs> this is the best. I had to only write it down because it was so subtle. Like everything was happening on the subtle realms, and 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 so you you don't really like this isn't just like a, a vision. It's it's all happening at the same time on an overlay on your normal reality. And so some of the messages I was passed was that it was hard to change when I don't recognize all the facets of myself. And um, what. What Magnus revealed to me is that like that little pink guy in the middle, uh, like that everyone had an angel and a demon like attached to them. And um, it's not that they're like they're either good or bad, but you're able to to feed them. And the one that you feed the most is the one that you go to. And uh, he was saying that like I, I fed I fed my angel more than I fed Jack, but Jack was pissed. Because he was like, I thought we spent so much time together. You don't want to hang out, and, <laughs> and, um, and then he showed him this, this, uh, like this picture of like a fragmented reality, um, of like all these different personas coming out of like this original body, um, how to perceive a, a person, uh, like this fractured glass that was my internal being. Um, in the bottom here, I have some scribblings where it's talking about like um, like the way that we perceive the the conscious being, like how we're like the, the, our soul is like this iceberg, and only like the part of it that's above is you know the part that we consciously recognize. But there's so so much under it, and then on top of that, ice and water are the same thing. There's still water, and so like there's so much of me that has been crystallized that is like the soul me uh that that I, I need to understand and witness in that like that facet that small darkness that is uh jack was a, a very small part of it and that that really blew his mind uh, because for the longest time he thought he was the shit. and and so did i 
and uh, so I, you know, my 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 they, this is the process of of madness, like wearing down my my old ego self, and um and transforming me into something else. Cause yeah, he shattered it, man. Um, do you, are you seeing anything crazy in there? Oh man, I'm seeing so much. Oh wow. All right. So okay, first of all, I'm getting just looking at the progression of these images it's clear that you're developing in your shall we say spiritual aptitude i don't know what else to call it on um, psychic abilities shamanic talents last two pictures are dreams mm -hmm. and this picture this is a clearly but this is like a shamanic vision you are you're awake but yeah you're i was awake, awake on this one state when you're drawing this as well so that says a lot about your development. Like it's clear that you're going through a progression and now you come to a point where in order to move forward, a big amount of self-acceptance needs to happen. And what I'm getting from this is that you have to decide what aspects of your personality you could benefit from or that you no longer needed so yeah you got jack over there and from what you've told me he helped you out quite a bit when you were younger but now you're at a point where he's done his job and it's time to move on and you need to accept aspects of yourself that are much more <laughs> much more let's say way more and you've got your higher vibrational like being Magnus over there saying listen dude you're capable of so much more and you need to take the time to realize that so I'm just getting a whole lot of self-acceptance here you needing to literally parse out which aspects of your personality you need going forward and which aspects you don't need and I, i'm really it's fascinating to see that you went through this process through such such a unique medium <laughs> yeah it, it was like i said it was very strange when it was happening and and when when i draw these pictures guys like it doesn't come out like a whole piece of art like <laughs> i have to go back and and like make it look better over time like as like as i reflect on my journals uh, it's like the picture comes more into more into focus as I understand life better. Um, even even on this picture here, like I, I see like there's like a squiggly line and then like a straight line. Um, and I feel like that squiggly line like kind of represents like because I remember hearing this stuff about like Greg Brady. He was talking about uh, how our DNA like coils up uh, when we don't have like when we're stressed and when we're feeling like fear and guilt and stuff like that. And when we feel forgiveness and we feel whole, our DNA actually like stretches out, it uncoils, and it, it actually activates more of ourselves. And so like, I feel like this picture was me like understanding like my fractured past and like coming into acceptance of like my life and like what I've done. Um, and in, in a sense, like, like asking my other selves for forgiveness and uh like i know that it just looks like a random squiggly in there but like i saw it and it resonated so i'm saying it. And that's how, how it works you know um when yeah i just when 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 i started understanding this stuff like when when, when this started to unfold to me like one of the biggest things that was jumping out to me the most was that like there's a lot of unconscious behavior that i do that isn't necessarily the highest me like it, it's like passive aggressiveness uh it's manipulation like if you see here at this bottom iceberg these are all these unconscious facets of myself uh, guilty passive aggressive insecure manipulation like those are things that like we have inside of ourselves that like unless you sit down and be like yo that is a part of me and i want to work on that like i i consciously want to fix those things I want to be better um do you do you actually start actually working on them and like i said it, it was me kind of coming to to realization that i had a lot of flaws 
Yeah, man. I mean, look, I think if anything, we've placed a lot of emphasis on the fact that your creative outlet could be considered uh, meditation. Because there is so much personal growth and self-healing happening here. And it's clear to me from this image that you're beginning to relinquish the personal ego in favor of higher aspects of your consciousness. And that is a very prominent process that occurs within meditation. And here you are doing that through your creative outlet. And I think that should just be emphasized. I mean, it's not just sitting there with your legs crossed and your eyes closed humming. I mean, it can be if that's what you're into, but there are so many ways that you can facilitate inner change and transformation within yourself. And, and what we're doing here just highlights that so well, man. It really does. I'm so Thanks. glad that you took the time to just to work on yourself, man, to, 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 to improve yourself and, and that you answered the call, so to speak. <laughs> Honestly, like, I'm so happy that it happened because I didn't even realize like how much better life could be. Like that's the thing when you're miserable you don't like and you've been miserable for so long that like you don't know how like you forget you forget the 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 sweetness of life and um it, it's only until you really start looking at your deepest shadows and uh you start to kind of chip away at them do you start to uh start to float again um uh, you know if you if you take that iceberg example you know i had so much under uh like uh, uh unconscious that was kind of dragging down my reality that uh if i if i never chipped at it like it would have continued to accumulate and i could have drowned you know i could i could have drowned in my own negative perceptions i could have drowned in my own uh subconscious programming and so that's why it's super important to to sit down take the time to to look at your past take the time to to really dissect what you feel like are your your victories and your losses, um, and and see how you can can alchemize like all your experience into something that is beneficial because your life is happening for you, not to you. And so it's it's when you keep that in mind that just that little thing that life is happening for me, not to me. Um, it takes you out of that victim mindset. And victim mindset is exactly what makes a lot of those unconscious programs. Um, we, have, we are all going through exactly what we wanted to. Our life is our responsibility. And um, that's, just, that's just how it is, man. Like, uh, that will, you know, it, yeah, <laughs> that's just how it is. Uh, does anything else jump out at you or are you ready for the next picture? Uh um, yeah, we can we can move on to the next picture if you like. I, I think we got quite a lot. What do you think? I think this one, yeah, this one, this one, I feel like was very clear. Like, I'm happy I, it was from like I, it was the meditative process instead of the dreams. Because sometimes I, I feel like I can get a lot out of uh, like I can get more concrete stuff out of the out of the uh, drawings than I can of the dreams. Because the dream stuff is. Like I said, it's so much, it's a little tougher to, to, to interpret because it's so fluid. Um, and the pictures are like only symbols to try to capture as much data as I can. Um, but when, when I'm in like a flow state and I'm drawing pictures, like I, I feel like sometimes I can get more. Uh, but that was, that's in the past. Like my, my, my flow state is completely different nowadays, guys. Now you'll see as, uh, as we go through all these pictures, uh, as it all starts to develop. Um, this next picture um, was actually like <laughs> like this one. This one was a dream. So you, <laughs> I, I was really like trying to sketch this all down as fast as I could because I, I feel like I got blitzed with all this information at the same time. Uh, that it was and it was all about the new earth and like what was happening and like the layers of reality um, and like how this all made sense. And it, this, like, I, I remember this was like, I, I remember being 
like in Jack's shoes and Magnus was walking him through all the information. And so um, it just starts off in this like middle area. And I remember in the dream, it was like a swirl of like, like primordial chaos of like black and white. And there were these symbols that arose out of the black and white uh, matter, I guess. And um, the symbols started to create vibrations that formed into like planets and celestial bodies and like all sorts of stuff. So it was, it, it became like, it, it looked like a plane. Like it looked like clay was just forming in itself and, and coming alive. Um, and like the vibrations from the forms that they were taking were making more forms. Um, and I, it started to start to uh, like almost like play out like a, like a chess game. Like, a, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. It, it, it looked like a clock, like, a, like some type of mechanism, like a dynamo. That's a good way to put it, um, of like the self-playing mechanism. Um, and, it, it, and it reminded me of like rotating on a disc of some sort. And then um, I started to zoom out even further. And then like I saw the disc and I saw that it was all covered with like black all around it. Like it was almost like sealed away, um, like in its own area. And um, like I saw the stars and everything like that. But I saw that that part of like the whole dream, like that, that part was, was just like a shell. Like, like this, this whole area here is like an egg. And it was the, the lower 4D um, astrals. And inside this egg, I saw like a bunch of alien spaceships and stuff like that. Like, like things that we would typically think of as alien stuff. And um, I saw like the, the Galactic Federation and, and, and like a bunch of ships. I saw a bunch of these little tube cigar looking ships. I saw a bunch of stuff. And I saw that the ships were beaming down energies onto these like onto that primordial chaos onto that illusionary uh, realm and it was causing some of the bigger pieces some of those bigger forms to like shift and and to like manipulate everything and um, but I kept it kept zooming out and um, it was saying that like vibes are the king of the earth and that like there there are new world representatives there are demons and there are fallen like there are all types of beings here that that have like uh, that are playing out this like this play this this show this dance and outside uh i saw like this solar flash coming and that's that's what this like big green thing is um i i saw it, it looked more like a giant stream of like plasma energy and i at this point in time, never really heard of anything like that before. <laughs> like I, I started to get into like Dolores Cannon, um, and like the Law of One, and so like that, that, like this is this is happening at the same time, um, like in my in my physicality, and then this is happening in my dream world, um, and I saw the New Earth, and like I saw what it looked like. I saw that like there was a threshold, like that had to happen, like an overlapping of like the New Earth and this like weird egg world. And um, once it happens like that, like it, it, it creates this Vesica Pisces for people to to uh, use that that weird imaginary space, that the space that, that I was talking about, the, the counterfeit space, the one with the alien spaceships and stuff like that. They're gonna use that to get people out of this weird, like primordial duality chaos and onto the new earth and um but i think it, it's all symbolic like i don't think it's like you're physically gonna go on a spacecraft and go anywhere i, I think it's all vibrationally like being exposed to this information is the thing that vibrationally sets you free uh to to know that there's something more out there and this 5d solar flash is like a, a flash of information from the seventh density apparently uh, <laughs> uh, and it's like knowledge from uh, Saturn. And if you if you know a little bit about astrology, Saturn is a is a teacher of like hard lessons. He's a he's he's the teacher of time and space. And um, and that would be that would kind of coincide with this weird chaotic dance that we're going through. Um, but outside of this chaotic dance, it talks about how there's a fractal reality and how space is subjective, and that the goal is to raise your free will. Um, 
and like how the new earth and like 5d moon and like all this stuff like it already exists and that we were we were trying to gain some type of knowledge by doing this dance some type of understanding uh that wasn't there before and um the real like the, the dream started zooming out so far that like reality started to break down and all i saw was like scriggles and like i just saw like uh, like this stuff was just worlds like worlds and worlds and worlds all like on a pattern it looked like what bubble wrap looked like if you can turn it into like a geometric form and and like it was weird i don't know how to explain it but it was weird and i i just remember that like the good and the evil self is it's all like part of the same pendulum and like everything had to swing a certain way so that a certain amount of worlds can be built from all the possibilities and like all these things is like a huge lesson like we're doing it so like a lot of people don't have to do it in the future and um yeah that's it was a lot of information i remember i think i got sick after this <laughs> like, i think i actually got sick after um I, I i remember i don't get sick very often but i i do remember like physically i think i got sick after this so uh, is there anything that jumps out to you or any questions about any of the things I said? Wow. <laughs> okay, well, that was a lot, man. There is so much in this, so, so much. Okay, so when you when you were talking, some, some information started to flow through me. Word. And like a lot, like the biggest thing that's just coming through me right now. It's like neon sign in my mind. You like, you need to say this, you need to get this out because that's what. So what I'm getting from this. All right, so Age of Aquarius, Earth Ascension. That is the transition of planet Earth into higher states of being, higher, exceeding the lower astral dimensions, going beyond that. Now, for the longest time, I thought that this process was just Earth getting back into an harmonic state of being so that it can be on par with the higher vibrational light beings of the universe. But based on what you just shared, this process, this, this dance, as, as you call it, this lesson it's not just affecting earth it's affecting everything including including um beings from the lower fourth dimensional realms like i can see the little ships there little little little, little um little, like i've seen ufo types so maybe grays or maybe draconians cigar ship that can be more technologically inclined Syrians. I'm seeing that the process that's happening on Earth is affecting those beings as well. And then we've got this beam of light just piercing the veil. <laughs> and it's like it's like this this download of information that seems to be accelerating the process. And yeah, man. I am I'm, I'm getting that this Vesica Pisces over here is the, the thinning of the veil, the, the higher, the, how do I say this? It's not just Earth's vibrational frequency that's increasing, it's, it's like a step up in every dimensional frequency. And the magnitude of this is steeply profound, more so than I can even convey with words. I mean, the fact that you were, I, I can tell why you got sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, our brain was like not having it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot, it just, it just, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, I, it, it kind of, emphasizes why there's so much attention being placed on earth right now by so many different beings because it affects everyone it's not just 
humanity that's being affected by Earth ascension. It's, it's every being in the universe. The information that's being gleaned from this process is significant. It's, it's relevant to, to every being. And that's, that's what I'm getting from this. Yeah, and, and I, I definitely, I agree with you. That, that's, that's definitely what I was feeling. Um, I, I also feel like uh, a large part of the message was that like Earth wasn't what I thought it was. <laughs> like it, it, I, because I, I expected to see like you know the, the the space, the marble, the blue ball, and like all of that. But what I wound up seeing was like this this like weird chaotic structure of like vibration and matter. And uh, they were telling me that like this was the process of like how new things are made. Like we all have to go into this like place, and we 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 forget everything. And we pretty much blend all the knowledge from all the places in the multiverse into one place. And uh, we're all acting out all the things that we learned and all the things that we uh, like need to unlearn. And it, like like this, this realm is where the energies come to sort themselves out so that they can be digested by the rest of the multiverse. If that, if that makes any sense, what do you think about that? That makes perfect sense. And the fact that you described it as like an egg, just it, it, I mean, it's everything's in that symbolism. It's like this, 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 this dimensional frequency, this pocket dimension of conception where, where information is conceived and it germinates until it is birthed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and I feel like it gets birthed when when the information somehow connects it back to the 5D Earth. Like, yes. that, that was the big point. Like, the, the, it doesn't really matter how the information gets there. People just need to know that there's something more than what they've seen, if that makes any sense. That makes perfect sense. It really does. Wow, so much. I need... I... Wow. <laughs> And um, all right, so how, how long have you been recording? I, I have like one more picture I wanted to show. Okay, yeah. If you wanna, I'm up for it. We can do one more. All right, this is the last one. Um, okay. So this picture actually came to me like this is I, I, okay. Now I'm remembering after I got sick. Um, right. I remember I like at one point like I started feeling so lonely. Because like I, I started to understand, like I, I was starting to understand this these these like I started getting these weird messages, and I didn't understand what was going on, and I didn't know how to how to verbalize it, and I didn't understand that my brain was actually trying to put it in pictures. I like I didn't even understand that that's what I was doing, and uh, I remember I had this like misunderstanding with Nikki, so we just had like a like a you know just a, a bickering, you know, it, what, what couples do. And I was just feeling extra just down that day. <laughs> and I remember at one point, like I was, I was just like holding, um, I was holding a crystal ball that I had had uh, that I used to meditate. And I remember like kind of talking into it and just being like, dude, I'm, I'm so tired of being like misunderstood. Like I, I feel like I've been out here all my life like alone, and I'm, I'm tired. Like I, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what these messages mean. Like I'm already weird enough, I you know like everything was getting strange, and I, I felt like I was having a really hard time connecting with everybody, uh, because I, like I was still awakening, <laughs> to, like the process of, of getting rid of all that old was uh, I was about to start my Saturn return as well. So like there's so much that went into that time of my life, and um. I, I had a vision. So this one, this one, like I closed my eyes and I saw it and then I had to draw it as best I could. Um, and pretty much like, cause I, after hearing like all that information from the last drawing, I, I didn't understand what that meant. Like I literally was like, I, I like, I, I understand you told me all the information. I wrote it down, but what does that mean? Like I need more, like it, it needs to be attached to more things that I understand. And uh, so they kind of showed me again. And this is pretty much a second picture of it. Uh, and like that, that little black dot in the middle of the planet is supposed to be me 
or or like just the a person in general like a, the light worker uh the star seed and um i remember zooming out and there was like all of these angels like they were just like and i don't even know if angels is the right word but they were just like all these people in like beautiful gowns like beautiful white robes and some of them were white and some of them were black and they were all like pouring their energy into this planet um and the stars were there and it, it was wild um and then like below the planet and so like the thing is like below didn't mean like the actual like physically below the planet it was like actually inside the planet and inside the planet were these giant statues like they, they look like giants they just look like giants like like the world was like literally built on the back of giants and these giants were asleep and it was because uh, like the, the giants didn't need to physically move around and do things to to affect their world it was like while they were sleeping they were controlling like what was happening on this planet and under those giants like even further down there was this big deep darkness and um but it had like it, it but it wasn't dark at the same time it was like this misunderstood like even it was feminine it was like this misunderstood feminine creature and uh, like I remember seeing it being like like uh, the equivalent of like it was bigger than all the giants. It was bigger than all of them. Like there was no way to size comparison to this because it was like it was bigger than that. It was like an energy. And um, I remember seeing like this big pink, pink and red, like it, it looked like a giant monster, um, but it was female. I, and I definitely remember it being female. And um, and I remember it having three eyes and like jagged teeth and that middle eye was open and it was green and it was like flashing this greenness. And um, I later found out that, that that had to deal with like Earth's heart, like because Earth was was originally like a feminine only planet. Like we, you know, we were all at one point, we were all female. Um, and so like I, I kind of saw like this, the, the feminine spirit of, of, of Gaia like that had been morphed and, and kind of warped through these uh, these power structures that have been weighing on her mind, uh, these giants. And through that, it's been changing like what our reality has been looking like, um, this, uh, the illusion of Earth and like all these spirits that were outside of Earth influencing it was actually like the people trying to, to help her kind of like figure out what the hell was going on. And I feel like Earth itself was changing, and like that was that was one of the big messages. And then I saw this giant worm. Um, it, it looked like a giant snake or a worm or whatever, but like and, and, it, and it had crosses in its eyes and like stars all over its back, and it kind of like was was curled over Earth and um, and over the uh, over the giant spirit as well. And it was kind of like making that egg. It was it was making that egg capsule. And then out like right outside that barrier was all of these like like I said the spaceships. And like through that like layer, I I, I call that layer like the lower 4D. Like uh, there was a bunch of spirits that were watching. And like some of them like watched and were happy. Some a lot of them were sad. Some of them were righteously angry. Um, I, I remember just seeing like all these these individuals watching, and I remember seeing a lot of these uh, craft like coming and taking uh, like spirits or, or just things, or maybe even ideas out of this this area, and uh, like the 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 spirits were were visibly upset that the uh, the the craft were were actually detracting from this experiment, and. Um, like as I started to raise my consciousness out of of these illusions, like I remember hitting this, this threshold where like I feel like I popped out of the whole thing. Like it was just like I felt like I was just my soul body, and like I, I was still connected. Like I feel like I had all these cords and stuff still connecting me to my to my spirit, and like it was all these like green androgynous anamorphous beings, and they were all excited to see me. They were like ecstatic they were happy and and like crying they were so happy that i reached out to them and um they were presenting me with this mask 
and this mask was uh, like a pink mask. And uh, I, like, as I put on the mask, I elevated higher than, than these like little green dudes. And I saw these giant pink eyeball creatures. And it reminded me of what looked like, uh, what, what, the, uh, what that, that feminine energy looked like inside of the earth. And so it was almost like these planetary consciousnesses were were like it i don't know how to explain it like i was getting the mask to become the planetary consciousness or we're, we're going to help the planetary consciousness somehow like i i just know that it was showing me a lot of stuff and it was telling me that like all this work is going to help me get this mask like at the end like i'm going to have this mask i'm going to be a part of this mask and it's going to be a part of something bigger and this is all connected to that feminine energy that lies with inside the earth. And, um, you know, I, I, I just remember these people at the top, uh, these guys at the, the green ones were, were way more emotional and like way more concerned, but these ones at the top were a little bit more stoic, um, and more observation. Like, like, like they had a sureness about them. Like they knew that whatever was happening was not going to fail, um, in any sort of way, but they, they knew it was hard. Like they, I felt like they knew the seriousness of it. Like, like it was like a like a surgery or something like it, it that's what it felt like 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 uh like doctors watching a surgery and um yeah this 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 was that first revealing to me like in the most direct way that they could to tell me that i wasn't alone and that like there there was something big going on and um and that it's way bigger than i can understand <laughs> and they're just they're just giving me the message to relay to everybody else when the time was right which i guess is now so um yeah this was in this was in 20 uh this was in 2020 uh january 18th so um i started to really get into um my starseed stuff at this point and uh things were starting to open up um is there anything that catches your eye in this picture or any questions about the stuff that i said yeah, I just I just have to say thank you, man. Thank you for sharing that. That was wow. Um, it all catches my eye. All of it catches my eye. And it's all so deep and profound and so relevant. Oh man, I'm so I'm so happy for everybody who gets to see this. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. So a lot of deep symbolism came through here and I yeah do you mind if I just interpret what, yeah. what I'm seeing or what I got from what you just shared with me sure yeah I want to hear your version okay all right so let's let's uh let's start with that wonderful feminine creature at the bottom there okay that is Tiamat that is the, like, if you look at the Sumerian illustrations of Tiamat, uh -huh. he looks exactly like that. Oh, man. Like, like, that is her face and her hair and her eyes. That is, like, the, the, the physical embodiment of the thought form of Gaia or Pachamama. It's right there. I mean, the fact that you got that is beautiful. And she is ancient. She's so much older than the the beings that are inhabiting her planet. Yeah. And then, oh, I mean, that's that's incredible. So, what you touched on there is that she's changing and she's transforming, and. That's really the essence of Earth Ascension. It's the existential period of the consciousness of Earth. It's like, oh, it's like, how do I, it's like the enlightenment of an entire planet. <laughs> and that's, that's what I got from, from what you shared there. And then you've got this, these, these giants on top of her. And what I'm getting from that is that those are the dwellers of Udal. There, I'm seeing the the seven Nephilim 
who drop their consciousness to conceive humanity. And yeah, they're 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 pretty ancient beings, but they're nowhere near as ancient as as uh, Tiamat, as the spirit of Gaia. So mm. yeah, they they came to Earth, and they played a huge role in the conception of humanity, which we discussed. But um, yeah, I'm definitely seeing that that they are integral to the development of humanity. All right. Mm -hmm. And now, focusing on all these incredible light beings, that's, I mean, that's, that's all of the, 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 the beings from other star systems who have been integral to Earth Ascension, who are helping the spirit of Earth find herself. <laughs> and then you've got this giant worm creature going all around. And that's like the Zona de Pellucida, or like the egg that, mm. that once Earth fully ascends, fully realizes who she is, then, then she breaks free. And then, then the rest of the universe, like, there's access to it. Like, the minute, the minute Spirit Earth breaks free from this egg, that's the moment that you, human beings are, are traveling outside of the solar system, uh, mm. is what I'm getting at. And then, you, 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 higher vibrating in your spirit body beyond all of this into these, I'm, I, I, I'm seeing like collective consciousness thought forms. Yeah. And they're often this mask. That must have been incredible. Oftentimes, when you're trying to it's very, how do I say this? It's, it happens a lot in shamanic journeys that the shaman has to change their form in a way that is more conducive to the, the plane that they're inhabiting. So you're getting this mask and your form is changing so that you can have the light body that you need to exist with these, I want to say, planetary consciousnesses. Wow, wow. That's what I'm seeing from that. And it's just incredible that when you said that they're looking at it with the same like seriousness as like doctors looking at a surgery, a surgery I mean, it, that just outlines how intricate and delicate and meticulous this process is. And it's, uh, it's really well illustrated here, man. I mean, I hope that you got the sensation that you're not alone from doing this drawing, because I'm certainly getting that, and it's, it's pretty great. <laughs> Yeah, the, the feeling I had like after was like, oh my god, what did I just draw? Like, <laughs> I wanted to show it to everybody and like explain, and then it just made me feel even crazier. But I definitely didn't feel alone anymore. So like, yeah, yeah. There, at no point like after this, like I I realized that uh, I can no longer say that I'm not doing something. If that makes any sense, <laughs> like oh, it's, yeah. no, it's no longer it's no longer a game. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. I think all of your drawings up until this point have just emphasized how integral your journey is, how significant it is, how, and how fundamental it is. And that goes through every star seed who's experiencing that loneliness. It's, it's the realization that, that you're here for a purpose. 
And it's important, and you can take comfort in the fact that that you're not doing that alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was one of the biggest things that I felt like. Like the 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 big message that I got was that like it's it's not necessarily that I'm special, it's that like this process is special, and um it it's like when when one of us gets better, when one of us improves, we all improve, and when we when one of us learns, we all learn. But the biggest thing is that we have to share, and so like this is me kind of giving my part of of the puzzle uh, as much as I can, uh, and as accurately. And as as authentically as I could, because、uh, yeah, it's just the way it unfolded to me. And I'm sure someone out there is gonna look at this, and it's gonna have a completely different message, and 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 it's gonna tell them exactly what they need to hear. Um, because that's just that's just how it works sometimes, man. You know. I totally agree with you. I mean, I just interpreted what resonated with me, what spoke to me when I saw this, and. It's so profound, man. I can tell by looking at this that you, you've got a journey, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you've got you've got a lot of things on your horizon, and I'm glad that I get to be a part of it. Oh my gosh! <laughs>、uh, yeah, I definitely feel like Earth is、uh, not not the last stop or anything like that. This is definitely. Important part of the creation journey, but I don't think it's the end by any means. Um. I do, yeah, I totally agree, man. Yeah. Right, so we covered we covered four pictures today, and we've been talking for a good bit. I think that、uh, I think it's a good time to wrap it up. Okay.、Um, is there anything that like jumped out at you about like any of these that you want to like touch back on? Well, um, I just want to touch on the fact that. That you didn't really fully grasp the, the in-depth meaning of these、uh, illustrations until after,、uh, until you after, until after you drew them. I think that's a very important point to outline. That you were able to facilitate inner transformation within yourself by working with your creativity. Yeah, it, it does not. It definitely did not appear all at once,、uh, and it, it's like guys, like it, it's dedication to yourself. You know, it's it's the it's the repetition of doing what you love and and what puts you in that meditative state. Whatever puts you into that flow state, you gotta do it, because、um, that's the that's the food for the soul. And、uh, once I started drawing like this, like you, you guys gotta realize, like at this point in my life, I actually. Was、uh, feeling like really pressured、uh, to draw a lot because I was drawing on Instagram, and、um, I was very self-critical of my art. Like my my like my personality was very perfectionist when it came to my stuff, and、um, like when I started drawing these pictures, I could not draw them perfectly. Like there's no way to draw them perfectly. They they were just symbols, and so like. The act of learning how to draw freely like this actually was a big catalyst for、um, me, like learning how to I don't know better enjoy my passion. Like I, I feel like I'm so much kinder to myself now when I'm creating、um, because I, I had to learn to like really love myself and love the process.、Uh, when before I think I was really focused on like the end, like the end product, and I and I wasn't enjoying the beautiful journey, the act of drawing and creating. And diving into your own mind and pulling something beautiful out of it. So,、um, yeah, that that was probably one of the biggest things that I pulled out of like all of this. Besides, you know, the mental fortitude, and shaping of the unconscious and stuff like that. Awesome, man. Oh, thank thank you again for letting me be a part of this. I mean, what a joy. Yeah, I, I, and I hope to I hope to share more,、uh, guys. Like this is book one of thirteen books. <laughs> like, like it, I have a ridiculous amount of stuff going on, guys. So I I like on top of making the podcast, like I really want to spend time、uh, going over this stuff because、uh, I feel like though the stuff that I post on the Instagram is these pictures and the questions that I asked myself. 
uh, during the time that like I was unraveling this information, um, you guys are like being able to kind of speak um, about my interpretation, and then on top of that, getting to see uh, someone else's interpretation, like a highly you know, uh, intuitive individual, um, you know, see what he sees out of it. it that that really makes me uh, feel self assured that like you know I feel valid. I feel validated. That that's that's what I feel validated. That's a and I think we, we all need to make sure that we all feel validated. And so it's so important to share your stuff because you, you, you're everything is valuable, man. No, oh, man. It was. Yeah. Thank you, man. I mean, that's that's really kind of you to say. Um, but yeah, man, it, your work speaks for itself. I mean, I'm just yeah. <laughs> it's clear that you're channeling information like from higher dimensions of reality that much is like certain like this is this is like you are a conduit for this work <laughs> I, I i got real lucky and and i just i had a lot of hard work but uh all right man we'll uh we'll catch you guys next time on the art decode